Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. My name is Manish Maud, and I'm the Executive Vice President of Strategy and Business Development at OSGA, a leading provider of customer-centric innovation strategy, solutions, and advanced analytics. It's my pleasure to welcome you here. Before I go ahead and introduce our presenters, a couple of notes. Firstly, this session is being recorded. Both the audio and the slides are going to be recorded, and everybody that is registered for the webinar will receive an email from us within 24 hours uh, with a link to access the recording and the PDF copy of the slides will be available to all attendees. Another little piece of housekeeping, we'll be doing a Q&A at the conclusion of this session. Please do feel free to use the question panel on the right-hand side of your screen um, in the GoToMeeting. With this, let me introduce our presenters. With me speaking today is Mr. Hazem Gamal, Financial Services Partner to OSG, Mr. Oliver Bertold, co-founder of Yucca Labs Germany, and Mr. Stefan Bauke, CEO of Belvoir Capital, Zurich. In this webinar, we will discuss how customer centricity and sentiment analysis provides companies with a much needed assist to stay responsive to customers, improve customer experience, identify innovation opportunities and trends. At OSG, we help our clients grow their business by understanding what matters most to their customers. You will also learn about Yucca Lab's unique platform that analyzes large amount of financial news and publications, helping financial executives, advisors, managers with information to address your client's concern faster in a proactive manner at a minimal expenditure of time. And uh, in addition to this, you will also listen to the case study from Belvoir Capital, Zurich, in terms of how they use sentiment analysis, managing the, the fund itself. Next slide, please. Very briefly, those of you who are not familiar with us, OSG is really built around customer centricity, leveraging behavioral and cognitive analytics. What it means is we work with you to understand what your customers want and why they want it. We are really about taking customer centricity and putting it into action. It's all about understanding your customers at a granular level to give you tools that help you drive growth and offer a great experience to your customers from the awareness stage to the entire customer life cycle to drive repeat business, customer loyalty and profits. We have been around for over 11 years with global presence in three continents. We have successfully delivered over 1,200 projects in over 25 countries to global Fortune 2000 companies. We are proud of our achievements in delivering over $80 billion of incremental growth to our clients. We focus on several key verticals, including CPG, retail, finance, energy, and life sciences. We have strong academic roots. 70% uh, of our staff have advanced degrees in engineering, data science, management, and research. OSG is a recognized thought leader in delivering customer-centric growth, and our work has been published in leading magazines and journals, such as Forbes, Harvard Business Review, GMR, and Chief Marketer. Before we take a deep dive into customer-centric approach, let's talk a little bit about customer centricity. While customer centricity is a great idea in theory, but putting it into action is harder than you think. Pinpointing to one thing that a customer wants is hard, and putting that change into action is even harder. Think about all the processes, procedures, and decisions that are being made every single day by companies, and that's going to have an impact on that customer. Hence, the approach has to be outward in and not inward out. And that's what exactly what OSG tries to do. OSG uh, tries to understand how and why of customer behavior and helps you define a customer-centric centric approach, which is the way of doing business with your customer in a way that provides you with a positive customer experience. And this is very important to drive repeat business, customer loyalty, and profits. When I think of customer centricity, one brand that comes to my mind is Amazon. 
I have been an Amazon, Amazon customer for years now. Amazon is the prime example of a brand that is truly customer centric. Amazon's customer centric approach provides inspiration, which any business could benefit and learn from. They have redefined what it means to be a customer focused buyer empowerment in its true sense, and they enjoy the highest customer loyalty. This is what OSG does. OSG helps you understand how and why of a customer behavior to help organizations deliver superior customer experiences by better anticipating the current and future needs and maximizing the long-term value. We'll discuss more about the customer-centric approach and the customer centricity in the coming slides. Next slide, please. So when you talk about customer centricity, the question comes is, how does OSG do this? And as I had mentioned earlier, OSG has successfully delivered over 1,200 projects in 25 countries to some of the global fortune large companies. Through its R&D, market research, and experience, it has successfully been implementing some of these complex projects. OSG has developed a highly effective customer behavior modeling, behavior modeling solutions, which are based on mathematical construct to predict how similar customers will behave under similar circumstances. Let me tell you upfront, this is very different than general customer analytics that you will hear and you will know for you, you must have seen all these days. We all know that human behavior is very complex. The behavior modeling solution that OSG, which is called ACEMAP, was developed in Stanford University. And it provides a unique and a true understanding of human condition making and purchasing behaviors. OSG uniquely combines advanced technologies, including data mining of structured, semi-structured, unstructured data, trends data, sentiment analysis data, various contextual data, including voice, tone, video, on a cognitive analytics engine to learn from the past. And then it layers it over the behavioral nudges and insight that is future embracing. Trade-off behavioral nudges powered by ACEMAP with real-time insights powered by machine learning and artificial intelligence algorithms, deep insights that help understand the future customer needs, strategic interventions, and guaranteed business outcomes. Having experienced the power of OSG tools in so many implementations, the question comes to mind is, what if you had a crystal ball that would predict customer behavior, choices and preferences with uncanny accuracy and give you the power to create a roadmap necessary to change the future of your business? The question comes is, would you want one? Turns out that crystal ball is already available. It's called OSG. OSG product and solutions deliver the foresight and powerful predictive models that are forward-looking and effective. OSG has products for its entire suite of marketing, customer experience management, and operation. Within the marketing segment, they address the segmentation, the customer segmentation piece. We have products which generate, uh, which helps with the innovation, communication, equity map, mapping, and of course, the pricing strategies, uh, including customer segmentation-based pricing strategies, policies, and procedures. Customer experience and engagement deals with value and engage and ascend. Those are some of the three products that we deliver that helps improve and redesign the customer journey and ex customer experience. On the operation side, OSG's products are highly recommended and used for risk management, margin, sales force forecast, and also in optimization of marketing spend and channel mix. Right from the beginning, OSG has one core principle. How can clients achieve breakthrough customer centricity? This is the primary reason why OSG has partnered with Yuka Labs. Yuka Labs is a unique decipher of behavioral expectations with a powerful news and sentiment analytics platform. It, it helps customers to ensure superior, to deliver superior experiences. And you will hear more about this from Oliver in the later part of the presentation. When I talk to my customer, they always want to know, how do we go from talk to action? What tools and capabilities we need to build to deliver a differentiating customer experience? The questions are far ranging. How do we leverage market sentiments and insights to compete more effectively? 
to approach and methodology that we need to adapt to deliver the real outcomes. To discuss this, I have invited Mr. Hazim Gamal, OSU Financial Services Industry Partner, to share his thoughts and observation about how customer centricity effectively helps in growing business and how do we spark trends to enhance customer engagement and experience. Mr. Hazim Gamal. Thank you so much, Manish. Uh, it's been really great working with you, the OSG team, and uh, Yuka Labs as well, too. And I'll just take a few minutes here to uh, share some observations that I have, uh, specifically from the financial services industry. Uh, you know, despite more than a decade of improving economies and record setting growth in the financial services industry, Margins continue to be under tremendous pressure from every aspect of the business in both traditional and non-traditional ways up and down the value chain. And one key way smart organizations are reversing this trend and overcoming it is through customer centricity as you just elaborated and pointed out. Uh, Dun & Bradstreet uh, recently completed a study in which they published that customer-centric firms are 40% more likely to see year-over-year -year improvements of up to 15%. You mentioned Amazon, for example. That's very impressive, but it is not easy to achieve, and they need help from organizations like yours and Yuka, who have proven experience and solutions to offer on this journey towards customer centricity. And I think there are several things that are continuing to drive deeper customer centricity and awareness of how important this is. Certainly one of them is uh, the competition. In almost every sector of the market, there are increasingly innovative product and service providers for every niche you can imagine, whether it's in banking, trading, asset management, cash transfers, cryptocurrencies, you name it. Up and down the value chain of every business and manageable, there is somebody who's coming out with very uh, clever, innovative, and powerful capabilities. Regulation is another one, and this is actually double-edged. On the one hand, while authentication, solvency, and customer rights are in every client's favor, the complexities and costs of compliance are soaring, and this is fueling mergers, acquisitions, uh, and we're even seeing departures out of this space uh, for those who can't adapt quickly enough or effectively enough to compete. And then the third one, which I think is why it's bringing us here uh, on, on this call today, is data and technology. And the collection of vast amounts of data, but more importantly, the increasing ability to turn that data into valuable information and intelligence is booming, as you mentioned. The array of technologies now available to help you take advantage of this data is mind boggling. And I'm excited to share one of them today, right? So. Customer expectations from the simplest mobile phone payment user to sophisticated global institutions, they're all becoming increasingly savvy customers in their own right. They bring their customer experiences to the business world and vice versa. And this is fueling unprecedented evolution of significant power shifting to our customers in almost every aspect of the business and life, and now through the capacity to easily select other solutions and providers if they're unsatisfied. They simply click, simply click somewhere else, sign up somewhere else, or move their business elsewhere because they have options and capability and they can do it easily more and more. Uh, so this is, where sentiment analysis can come to bear, I think, as well, too. You know, I think as a, as a key beacon of an enlightenment and direction to help on two things. One is to anticipate opportunities, and the other one is to address those concerns with more time to think about what to do and how best to do it. This is the essence of augmented intelligence. Provide humans with the information and time necessary to make good choices for their companies and their customers, of course. And by the way, you need both together, time and good information in order to act effectively and efficiently. Next slide, please. So while I could go on about other influencing factors, and there are many, uh, in, in fact, uh, there is tangible evidence in the improved results of customer-centric organizations, as I pointed out earlier, uh, to their overall health, bottom line, 
in the long term and with almost immediate effect uh, on that bottom line. Hence, I'm really excited with what Yuka Labs have developed in their advanced sentiment analysis platform that can help financial services companies and many others, by the way, uh, more deeply understand what may be happening in their target areas of interest much sooner than by any other means. Time, you know, it's among the most precious of our resources. We can't recover it. It moves at the same pace as everybody else. All you can do is use it as best as possible. An example of this is who has time to read up to 200,000 articles a day from over 20,000 curated sources? No one. Not only that, it's humanly impossible. And why would you need to anyway? Well, we know that a very big part of what shapes our perceptions and expectations, both as business people and as customers, it has to do with all the past and current things that we interact with. So we are the sum of what we see, what we read, hear, and relate to, and that is what influences our thinking and actions. It's basic human biology. So based on that, Yuka Labs have built a capacity to capture a much broader perspective of what your target interests are and deliver it to you in a very tangible and digestible manner with significant lead time to allow you to process that intelligence and consider what your next best move is. This offering fits very nicely into OSG's wheel of services and capabilities here as, an, as a component of the AI and predictive analytics solution uh, slice of the pie, and it's designed to help organizations improve their performance through customer-centric approaches and tools as Manish Hsu elaborated on earlier as well too, right? So we're going to hear now uh, from Oliver Berktold of Yuka Labs about how they developed their sentiment analysis platform. And what we'll see today is organized around investment professionals. And we have a fascinating case study with Stefan Bauke, who will share with us that uh, how it demonstrates an extreme application of this platform, but also its deep capacity to act on behalf of and inform human decisioning in the portfolio management arena. But as you listen to Oliver and Stefan, think about all the different ways a platform like this could augment business processes with its early warning interpretations that could be used internally to help, for example, PR, marketing, sales, uh, other client-facing roles, or market watchers like we'll hear about today, analysts, portfolio managers, and traders, or how this platform could be integrated into your environment for direct access by your clients. You'll see how capable this platform is. It's thoughtful design for the end user and the ease of integration for those involved with its implementation as well too. Oliver? Thanks Manish and Hazem for this introduction. So let me tell you about how we will help you to unleash the power of financial news data. So let me start off with what problem we're trying to solve at Ucalab. As you know from your everyday lives and your everyday jobs, it's simply not possible to consume and analyze and take into account all the information that is appearing constantly and to base your decisions on. So we want to solve this problem of information overload by giving finance professionals and other professionals access to the benefits of artificial intelligence and machine learning to augment their own human capabilities. So we call this augmented language intelligence in order to stress the fact that we don't aim to replace the human, which then will be artificial intelligence, but rather strive to make humans even better in what they do best, which is taking decisions based on the information at hand. So our augmented language intelligence has the following advantages over a human or yourself. Uh, as you know from yourself, you kind of uh, choose subjectively some articles, maybe five, maybe 10, maybe 20 a day, but max probably 50. Uh, you're stuck in a filter bubble, so uh, you're always already biased in what articles you choose. And then you, you read on these few uh, articles and on that fundament you build this unprecise gut feeling and you also have an emotional bias. 
Uh, technology, on the other hand, has a very systematic real-time approach to news and it uh, analyzes more than 200,000 articles per day and then builds a very precise sentiment uh, indicator for every company, every topic and every region. And that assessment is very rational and linear. So it's always the same and uh, serves as a sparing partner for your uh, human uh, gut feeling. And you can back up your own feeling and, uh, and challenge that uh, with, a, with a precisely quantified uh, sentiment indicator uh, that is a uh, linear and algorithm made and is based on a lot more articles so what have we done over the past years we have developed a unique multilingual nlp pipeline that automatically reads and interprets over 200,000 professional financial news in english and german from over 20,000 global sources per day through monitoring the financial news landscape, we're able to deduct the sentiment indicators for every company, index, and sector, and determine the influence of these news on the stock price development. So unlike most of the competitors who scrape online and social media data, we focus on professional financial news and work with the publishers and analyze over 200,000 articles from more of 20,000 global sources per day. So we have three different types of news that we look at. So on one hand, we have news wires, which deliver fact-based real-time news. On the other hand, uh, we also have licensed print content. So for example, we have uh, the full text of the Washington Post print edition, so you can get an editorial view on certain topics. And then the third pillar uh, is journals, business magazines, and online financial media outlets to get the global coverage. So here you can see an overview of our product portfolio. And uh, it consists out of a software as a service cockpit and an API, uh, which is paired with web components. So the cockpit comprises out of two main parts. On one hand, you have the news lab that provides a structured and aggregated overview of the news, the sentiment, and the topic for companies, industries, and sectors. On the other hand, the trend lab provides you with an early warning system that alerts you when the sentiment trend has reached a turning point and it's time for you to act. In addition to our SaaS offering, you can have a customized data feed over our API even combined with visualizations from the cockpit, which come as a web component and are as easy to integrate as an iframe. But enough with the slides, let us dive right into the live cockpit. So here you can see uh, the start screen of our news lab. So let's imagine that I'm a portfolio manager or a relationship manager, and I'm struggling to keep up with all the news surrounding the companies in my customer's portfolio and on my own watch list. And uh, I struggle to determine their influence on my investment decisions. So how can I use this overview to get a quick and structured update of what's going on? So the colors you see indicate the sentiment. Down below, you can see the topics and on the left-hand side, you have the respective articles. So uh, the greener the color, the more positive, the more into the red, the more negative the sentiment. The percentage number is the precisely quantified sentiment indicator, which goes from zero to 100, with zero being the lowest, 50 being the medium, and 100 the most positive. Next to it, the arrow is the trend. So I can either look at, uh, uh, at the news uh, in a total overview and see where did the sentiment change. I can immediately see what were the topics most uh, prominent in the media, and then I have the single articles to read down, uh, read uh, the full text and uh, get the background on the story. So I cannot only look at this by countries and indices. I can also look at it by industries and sectors. In addition to that, I can also uh, choose uh, my portfolio on the left-hand side. And then I will get a customized overview over my own portfolio or my customer's portfolio. As you can see here, I can quickly uh, uh, check what was the sentiment development for the companies I'm invested in, 
what's the trend, what were the topics, and then I can read into the articles. So in all of these views, I always have the possibility to drill down. So here, uh, for example, on the NASDAQ 100, I can click on it and I can see how the sentiment behaved over time. I can see how many articles were posted for the different days. And I can immediately see for the constituents which ones got positive media presence and which one got negative media presence. And uh, the topic adapted as well as the articles. So then I can choose a company of interest, for example, Facebook. And I can see how uh, their sentiment trend evolved over the last few days, uh, which is not too positive in this case. And I can also compare uh, the sentiment development with the sectors and the indices the company's in uh, to kind of make a judgment if it's just a development for the company or for the whole sector. Uh, down below here, uh, I can again see uh, the most prominent topics uh, for the company and I can click on a specific topic and the articles will adapt. So I can either now choose to uh, read into the background with the article, I can highlight where Facebook is mentioned, or I can uh, use the data graph, which is a visual assessment of all the entities <coughs> which are mentioned along with Facebook in these articles. So the idea is that down below you see the different topics uh, that are prominent in the media and the data graph is visualizing what other companies, persons are interlinked around these topics. I can then uh, click on a certain uh, topic down below and the respective relevant uh, connections will be highlighted. So uh, this gives me uh, a way to explore uh, the different topics uh, that I see in the data graph and uh, the articles on the left hand side adapt accordingly. I also can uh, filter by positive or negative mentions or uh, sort by, by the trend. So I'm really quick in assessing what's going on, what are the topics, and uh, I can then choose to read the best articles to get the even more uh, detailed perspective on it. Or if a customer calls me up and asks me about a certain company, I can quickly search for the company, in this case for Tesla Motors, and I can then uh, also here choose if I just want to look at English or German media, and I will get uh, the respective uh, answers. And with the topics down below, I can get a quick and structured evaluated overview, what's happening, and I can see the relevant connections. So in addition to the news lab, which gives me an overview of the, the different uh, topics that drive the market and shows me where the sentiment is shifting, we also offer an early warning system, which is the Trend Lab. Uh, here, the sentiment indicators for 19 different sectors, which you can see on the left-hand side, are aggregated. Uh, so green stands for a positive uh, sentiment for the sector and red for a negative sentiment. And yellow is a warning uh, that uh, the positive sentiment will soon uh, uh, might soon turn into a negative sentiment. Uh, so the aggregate sentiment scores I can see down below. Uh, here the gray curve I can see the index uh, of the sector and I can see on this index curve the specific entry and exit signals in red and green. Down below the orange line is the long-term moving average, the green line is the medium moving average of the market sentiment. So when these two lines intersect, a respective signal is triggered. You can see in addition, we also have a stop loss uh, that is activated. And uh, depending on the volatility of the sector, we give the sector five to 10% to breathe. Once that condition is breached, uh, exit signal is triggered. So you can also look at this sentiment as an overlay and benchmark it with a benchmark of choice. Here we're looking at the DAX, but you can also choose a different benchmark. 
So on the right hand side, the green line uh, is our sentiment index and the gray line below is the benchmark. So in this graph, uh, you can see that our model dates back to 2006. From 2015 onward, it's the life performance. So it's more than three years uh, life performance and out of sample performance. And starting from February 2017, uh, the first European equity fund uh, based on sentiment was uh, launched. And uh, Stefan Bauke uh, is the CEO of Belvoir Capital and is going to talk about that in just a few seconds. So the most important number on this chart is actually the current investment ratio, which uh, at, at the current state uh, in our model is at 100%. Uh, so this current investment ratio is based on the 19 sectors uh, that we just looked at. If all the sectors have a positive sentiment, uh, the market situation, the market sentiment is uh, very good and we advise to stay fully invested. As soon as 50% of the sectors have a negative sentiment, uh, we reduce the investment allocation uh, by 50%. And then with every additional sector, we reduce it gradually until uh, to the point where we're not invested in the market anymore and as soon as the market sentiment picks up again uh, uh, we reinvest into the market until uh, we're 100 percent invested so that's the basic signal uh, which is delivered to clients through the api and uh, stefan bauke will uh, elaborate more on his use case uh, at Belvoir Capital, how they use these uh, sector signals for the fund and uh, how they created a fund strategy around these uh, economic sector signals based on the sentiment. So let me switch back to the presentation and welcome Stefan Bauke. Uh, uh, Stephen, thank you, Oliver, for introducing me. Um, it's always interesting to listen to the capabilities of the system. Um, after using the system for almost, almost two years, we see the improvement almost with every relaunch uh, of, uh, of, of, the, of the cockpit. And I just discovered a couple of new things, which I like. Um, just a side note from my side. Um, let me introduce a little bit what, what we are doing. We are a multi-family office um, uh, based in Zurich in Switzerland. And um, we've been, um, let's say, following Ucalab for the last two and a half years um, about their sentiment analysis. And um, and we, we thought that's something completely different to that what we've been doing um, as a family office um, once we are more kind of a bottom-up research-driven um, um, uh, investment house, we look more on fundamentals and also global macro stuff um, instead of instead of the news flow and the interpretation of the news flow. And once I met Andreas and, and also Oliver in the last two years, um, we've seen that um, this Ucalab could could add a massive value to our existing. Um, kind of biased thinking um, and 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 carve out the psychological effects of of human behavior and um, saying this um, we've been um, exactly on that slide which uh, which is shown right now this is something where we started in 2014 and 15 when markets t um, turned um, due to the kind of hard landing discussions with China, with the earnings recession in the United States starting and the emerging market collapse um, in, in, in 14, 15, um, we've, we've seen a major sh um, drawdown in the markets and also in our um, investment, um, investment portfolios with our clients at different asset managers and different banks. And uh, I was talking to Andreas at that time and, and he said, no, we are out of the market. We, we, we went down in the investment level. Um, um, Oliver, can you, can you please switch to the investment level? Because in this, on this page, we don't see it. Thank you. Here you see when you go with the cursor down to exactly to the to the time frame between 15 and let's say September 16, exactly down there, they reduced the exposure. And on the upper chart where you see the the gray uh, the, the the orange or red zone depending on your uh, on your color scheme and your PC on your uh, screen, um, you see you could uh, carve out at least half of the 
half of the downside performance and you could protect your portfolios against major losses. And once I've seen this, I've been pretty convinced that this system may um, may add value in our, not only in our asset allocation um, um, decisions, uh, but also in our risk um, analysis and and, uh, and our risk uh, targets we have set with uh, most of our families. Because um, the, the existing risk models we have, they're all backwards looking. They're looking at VARs and contributions, attributions, correlations, and these kind of things. But as we know, when market turmoil, turmoil start to start to increase and, and start to happen, um, we see correlations are flipping around and volatilities, volatilities go through the roof that the VARs don't really predict pre precisely what to do with the, with the exposures and where to go. And here with the... Eucalypt, we have a really kind of an early warning system uh, where we see when when the sentiment on the news and depending on each single sector or each of the overall market, um, that this is this is quite helpful for us as a, an add-on to our existing kind of um, parameters we're looking at. Um, we have kind of eight different parameters, and and we added we added uh, Eucalypt as another a major um, contributor to our decision-making process and our risk analysis and risk assessment in, in our asset allocation um, committee. So um, that lets us uh, to invest into Eucalyp, but also to to uh, start an initiative in uh, early last year, which was in February, once we said, okay, uh, why not launch a fund? And, uh, and since February 2017, we have this fund live. We've been um, doing a little bit of math, um, how we would allocate the things and how would we be the best to to have um, this early warning systems adapted to an investment strategy. And and uh, as we just see here on the right-hand table, um, we've um, chosen the broadest index in Europe. It's a stock 600, a little bit comparable to the, to the Russell 3000 or the S&P 500 in the States. And... Um, and this index consists out of 19 subsectors, and uh, within these sectors, we see the different sectors are uh, moving up and down. And but when overall more than 11 sectors are positive territory, we stay invested. Even when there are 15 sectors positive, we stay at 125%. We put a little bit of leverage on this to um, capture more from the upside and also to regain the fees we. We we've been charged in the, on the fund basis from custodians and uh, management. Um, so that's actually the, the the fund, and we've been pretty surprised that we captured all of the upside in the last um, last rally last year. And um, since the market turned around this year, uh, we had a shock end of January, beginning of February of uh, five to 10, 15 percent percent in the markets, depending on the sectors and depending on. On the stock market indices, uh, we cannot predict that with the system. No system on the on earth can predict these kind of uh, black swan events overnight, which happens within two three days. But since then, we've been seeing that our green sectors, and we have been end of seventeen and nineteen positive sectors. Never, uh, never have seen that uh, in my entire life. That all sectors have been positive. Um, we've been seeing it coming to yellow and red flagged over the last three months. And now we're, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, we've been now down to something like nine sectors out of 19, which are positive. And uh, this gives us now a little bit of a sign that the markets and especially the fundamental news from the single stocks within each single sector uh, um, have a little bit of a downturn in their news flow. Let's call it that way. Either it might be earnings revisions, it might be a negative news flow, like Facebook, we've uh, had uh, heard this exa example. Um, so so we, we've been reducing the exposure in the first time since the fund is live from 100% uh, percent, uh, to now actually um, 40%. So, so from that side, we are we're quite 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 comfortable with the fund, um, uh, but also we use it in our internal um, asset management department and in our risk management department to assess risks to to be earlier than any other um, warning system, and to kind of uh, kind of trying to trying to um, yeah digest the thousands and millions of 
of news and information and data um, we are faced on a daily basis, which nobody else can 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 cope um, except you have uh, kind of an AI learning system and a and a machine learning system which which uh, puts that into into baskets and puts that into brackets which is positive which is negative so um, that's a quite quite helpful tool and uh, even on a day-to-day -day basis we've seen uh, we've seen quite a big support we have very well informed clients um, a couple of private equity guys hedge fund guys uh, a lot of entrepreneurs they read a lot they know a lot and they call me up in the morning and say stefan did you know about that and that and what your what your what's your opinion and how do you see earnings momentum in that stock or in that stock or in that market and i click here and easily maybe um um, all of you can help me with a with a cockpit, and you click in um, the the stock or the sector, or whatever you would like to have. For example, put in put in uh, which, what's out there, Roche, for example. It's a very nice example in in Switzerland. Um, and you click on that, and you see the momentum on Roche, and you see the news coming out um, once uh, something's coming out. And and on the top right side, you see you can choose in between daily, weekly, and monthly news. And uh, you can get every news in, in, in instant um, information. So you're kind of much better in your search and filter functions than we've been able to do that with Capture That with Reuters or Bloomberg, which we also have as systems. Because there you have un, unfiltered, unsorted um, information. Here we get the positive news and the negative news, and you can you can easily create your own opinion on each single single event or each single single stock or or sector. So that's uh, that's from my side. Um, are there are there any questions uh, in terms of a live case or or showcase from from the audience right now? Thank you, Stefan um, and uh, Oliver. Hazem and Manish, that was an excellent presentation. We have a couple of questions. Uh, the first one is for Manish. Uh, Manish, can you help us understand uh, what are the metrics that you focus on um, in a customer-centric business? That's an excellent question. Thank you very much for that question. The biggest metric is a customer lifetime value. When a business launches new products so customers or service campaigns, it can't evaluate the success of how much stuff or services it sells. So if you sell products to customers who will never buy from your game, then that's not very useful. So the business has to determine how did those products or campaigns affect the CLV, the customer lifetime value of various segments of customer, and then see how did those products or campaign affect the various segments and whether the activity extended the CLV or if it attracted new high value customers into the fold or who will be returning customers. So that's very important. And uh, OSG has perfected CLTV calculation, customer lifetime value calculation over the years. And uh, we have advanced analytics and uh, sophisticated models uh, to predict the next, the net profit attributed to the entire future relationship with a customer. I hope um, that helps me answer your question. Thank you, Manish. Um, in the interest of time, uh, this will be a final question. And uh, Oliver, can you help us understand, uh, you had mentioned resources such as Washington Post. Um, and so how do you deal with this uh, terminology of, of fake news being given to mainstream media, at least in the United States? Okay, yeah, so that's a question that we actually ask quite a lot. Uh, the term fake news uh, kind of uh, has become a buzzword uh, also due to some prominent use by uh, the US president of that term. Uh, so uh, we have a very uh, clear strategy on, on that. And uh, unlike most competitors, we do not scrape data from, from the net or analyze social media. So we decided to focus on professional financial media because uh, they work directly with renowned publishers and uh, they depend on their credibility of their brand uh, because uh, they need a good brand for, uh, for their survival and their existence. So therefore, these publishers have professional editors and uh, they do fact checking. They even have fact checking units and uh, they validate the content of the articles before they distribute it. So uh, on the other hand, you have uh, uh, you, ha you don't have that in social media. So neither on Twitter or Facebook, uh, it is ensured that the content that is distributed 
through these social media networks uh, are correct. So uh, there is definitely an issue of fake news that is hard to control. And there's a lot of uh, bots uh, that pursue automated publishing uh, in large volumes. Uh, and uh, that sticks to these channels. So that's why uh, we have this uh, clear focus on professional financial news, because that's the news and sources that our target clientele trusts in. Thank you so much, Oliver. Uh, that was an excellent answer. Uh, Manish, would you like to close with a few words? Certainly, Gita. So thank you for your time. And uh, the webinar and the presentation will be available on our website at wizianetics.com. Uh, my contact information, along with Oliver and Hazem Gamal's information, is right there in front of you. Once again, thank you for your time and have a great day.